This is the Bittersweet and Twisted Records podcast with Vince and Bobby. I'm Vince. I'm Bobby. And here we are with episode eight, I think. Yep. Pretty positive. I think so. Oh, it's eight then. <laughs> um, I don't know if we're going to sound any different today because we're recording in a slightly different location. We moved from the couch to a table. Yes, we finally have a dining room table. So, we're going to record this at the table. Um, Oh, so we've got two albums ready to go, as usual. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as we've done the last couple, they're not bargain bin records. Well, let me phrase that. Mine's finally not a bargain bin record, because my last couple were. Oh, yeah. And Bobby had stepped away from the bargain bins. I did, I did. Um... But before we get into her record, um, you know, do the usual. We're going to beg you to like, follow, subscribe, subscribe, share, all that stuff. You know, um, mainly we're on Instagram, so we do most of our posting. There's a little bit on Facebook. Mm-hmm. I don't really do Twitter because I forget about it. And I haven't done anything on TikTok yet. Because we're, we're old. We haven't figured that out. No. I mean, I have ideas for TikTok, but I'm afraid it will come across as like the old people oh, trying to be... no, we don't want to be that Trying cool. to be cool with kids. Cool kids. But um, yeah, all of our links um, are bittersweetandtwistedrecords.com. So you can have all the fun stuff, check out all the social media, and the follow, and the liking, and the sharing, and the subscribing, all that. Yeah, and check out the merch, because we have our original logo and the punk rock logo. I finally uploaded the punk rock logo. It's super cool, and I um, got some shirts um, with it, and it just cracks me up. I it, love it. It turned out so. way better than I thought it was going yeah, to. Yeah, I really like it. For something I didn't really put much effort or thought into when mm-hmm. I made it. Yeah. And we've got a special offer, but I'm not going to talk lid off the podcast Ooh. with it. I'm going to wait till some point in the podcast to talk about a special offer. Okay. That way you have to listen to the whole episode to get to it. Because I'm not going to... You're so sneaky. I'm not going to throw it away right in the beginning. So you listen like five <laughs> minutes. You're like, oh, I'm done. I'm out. I'm going to go do what this offer is. I'm not going to say anything about the offer. Well, if you listened up to our eight episodes, then thank you. We appreciate it. All of our listeners out there. For and some reason, we have most of our listeners seem to be in Germany and Brazil. Yeah, which is awesome. Hey, I don't know, more the merrier. But we would love to have um, more listeners and everything. Some Canadians would be nice. Come on now. <laughs> eh? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's get going with Bobby's record. Yes. And which is? Bat Fangs. Okay. Bad things. But first, I gotta say because we just got past the Thanksgiving day, so I have to say, I hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. I okay. Do. Yeah. You know, even though we're celebrating tomorrow, but I just wanted to say everybody's celebrating and having a good time with well, the time our, you well, listen our, to this. Our, our second celebrating. Our second celebrating. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, because um, you know, then it's what happens when you have all different families and different people. Absolutely. And, and we've all... In different states and... We've all melded together. So... But anyway, so I'm going to be talking about bat fangs. And did you want to... You don't want to announce yours yet. You Not yet. Save I'm saving it. mine. Save it. Save it. Okay. So, um... First of all, well, before yes. you get in the album... Oh, goodness. Yes. Do you want to talk about how we discovered bat fangs? Well, that's all in me right up. All right. Yes. Okay. Because... My style of writing, I like to... Your book you wrote about bat book. fangs. You might want to contact them about publishing it. I know, that's true. Maybe I can be a good, a good journalist, you know. A music um, magazine needs me. Um, so anyway, so Bat Fangs um, is a debut album. It was released in 2018 on black vinyl. Then in April of 2018, it was re-released on a lemon yellow vinyl in a limited run, which is what I have and what I was gifted by my super awesome boyfriend. Oh yeah, I did buy that, didn't you I? You did buy that for me. Yes. And you, were, you were sitting here saying, you said gifted. I was thinking, by who? Yes, did, you. Oh, yeah, I did buy that, yes. didn't I? So yeah, it's really cool. It's on a, like a nice creamy lemon color. Um, anyway. 
Um, it has nine songs on it, uh, five on side A and the remaining four on side B. Um, this is their, like I said, their debut album. Um, and also came with a downloaded card and a very cool old school merchandise style mail mail order it, form. It, it reminds me of the old Enigma Records mail order form. Yeah, like so that's kind of neat, kind of very nostalgic. I liked it. So I just recently, or I say Vince and I just recently learned of this band Bat Fangs after um, we were recording a podcast episode for Bittersweet and Twisted. Yeah, it was actually the last ep- was the yeah. episode. It was six or seven we were doing. Yeah. So, um, and I was checking my emails, and I received an email from the independent record shop, Rough Trade. They were showing um, different bands that had new releases and um, the exclusive releases through Rough Trade. And so we were sitting looking at them, and I was listening to some of the sample tracks that they had for each band. Yeah, because there's a lot of bands we'd never yeah, heard of. We're, of like, we're like, who's this? And yeah. some, some weren't that good. No, and some, that's true. A couple were pretty good. Yep. And then we had the Bat Fangs. Yeah, we came across Bat Fangs. Um, and the actual, the preview that they had on there was for their actual second album, which is called Queen of My World, which um, was released in October uh, 29th of 2021. So fairly recently. And I guess that's why that was coming up as a... Yeah. Um, an email. I think, I think, didn't Rough Trade have an exclusive color? Mm-hmm, I think they so. did. Yeah. yeah. So, um, in the description on the Rough Trade site, it states um, a little blurb about Bat Fangs, which uh, I really liked. It said, Born of a shared love of hair metal, partying, and the reckless spirit of rock and roll, East Coast duo Bat Fangs brings a nostalgic combination of shredderistic. Guitars and heavenly, <laughs> heavily harmonized hooks, and I must agree with them. So the song, the yeah, the sample that we played, we really liked it. Well, I really liked it. Yeah, we li- and then we're like, oh, we listened to a few more samples. Yeah, we did. It was really great. Um, and then that led me to looking back at their debut album. Yeah. Um, and I think it has more of like a classic garage sound with a bit of post punk flair to it. They I mean, they kind of remind me. I mean, I know some people, even the band themselves, will be like, oh, no, when I say this. Mm-hmm. But they kind of remind me of like a punk rock version of The Knack. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Cause, yeah. Because, you know, this, you know, you got the, the energy from it, but mm-hmm. you got the catchiness of like, of The Knack. You know, I know people go, oh, Knack, My Sharona. Dig yeah. deeper than My Sharona. Yes, First of all, My Sharona is a great song. That is a good song. The Knack were a great band that, mm-hmm. unfortunately, or, you know that that one song, obliviated, yeah. obliviated. Is that yeah. the right word? Obliviated, obliviated. Oh, yeah. That's one of the words I think that I always like. Did I say obliviated? You, you did, but you know, I think if we can all. At this I'm not point, editing any of this out. It's just too <laughs> I think hard. At this point, we can. But anyway, the knack were great. There were there were yes. there was more to them than Mashrona. Yeah. So um, yeah. So it's it's a great sound. Um, so just to give it a little bit of background on it. So Betsy Wright, she's the singer, guitarist, bassist and pianist on this album. Uh, Laura King plays the drums, percussions, as well as uh, as background singing. Um, So Betsy, which I was looking up a little bit about this because I knew that they were both from the East Coast. And I was trying to, you know, figure out which one was from where because one I'd heard was from Baltimore and one was- Laura's from Baltimore. Laura's from Baltimore. And the other one I thought was from North Carolina. Well. I'm not sure exactly where Betsy's from. I couldn't find um, all my looking where yeah, she's what, a mystery. what state she was. But she did go to um, George Mason University, which is right, you know, in Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. So, and she actually... Um, you sound like a stalker. I do, don't I? Yeah, I couldn't find much out of about. But, and I also know that she um, teaches piano at a school in Washington, D.C. Oh, and I did, and well, I don't want to give too much away, but give it away from what? What you're going to say later? Yeah, on or, yeah. Or, or how much stalking you did? Oh God! You yeah. want the authorities <laughs> to know? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't want Betsy and Laura to know how much yeah. I stalked them. But, um, so yeah, so when um, she's not recording or touring with her other band, X Hex, who are also really good, really great. Um, uh, I'll give you a little bit of background on those. So that was a trio band, um, X Hex, where Wright she performs as the bassist and singer, more background singer, not so much as the lead singer, but um, she plays mostly bass. Um, but she learned piano at the age of six, and at around the age of nine, she began borrowing her dad's guitar, which I think's really cool. And she taught herself how to play. 
Um, more so when she was 12, she was really kind of, she states, looking at that Annie DeFranco style. Yeah. So, um, <coughs> but she said she grew up, you know, um, listening to different bands, especially um, Led Zeppelin and Jimi Hendrix. Um, and she, I ended up looking up and was reading an article on She Shed's um, website, which is like a musical magazine on website. And she was speaking to the journalist Cynthia Schimmer. And she said, it's such a male dominated, dominated genre, but it's the music that I love. I want to take all the stuff and make it my own from my perspective, which I think she does do that in Bat Fang. Um, so where she does come back as playing the guitar, lead guitar, and she's pretty awesome playing that guitar. That one guy also that we saw. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so then she wanted to do something more so on the lines of like where she got to play guitar and um, her making her own set, uh, but she had trouble trying to find a drummer. So she just um, was, you know, looking for him, looking for him. And then she finally, she, um, she had did a show with um, X Hex, where also Lara King's other band, um, Flesh Wounds, had also played. Okay. So they kind of had met through that, and she sent a demo to Lara, um, and Lara liked it and decided to, yeah, hey, uh, I'll be the drums on it. So. They created this album and this band together. Um, and that's where this album comes from. But I'm gonna give a little bit also about Lara. So Lara had been in other bands also. Like I said, she was in Flesh Wounds, um, which released two albums in 2012, 2014. Uh, they were out of Carboro, North Carolina, where they were on Snot Records. Snot Records. Snot Records. Uh, then released a three-song single on Merge Records. They are more of definitely a heavier rock. You can kind of see where Lars' style, I would say, is definitely influenced more by hair metal. And she even does talk about that, like how she really is. Really? Yeah, she really loved Poison. I don't hear that in Flesh Wounds. Was really, because I just think of the so hard, the hard drumming that yeah, she was still, in. All right. But... I definitely think they have a more heavier they're definitely, punk sound. They're definitely, flesh ones are definitely more punk. Yeah, they're definitely more punk. Um, much the, much punkier and harder and yeah, faster than they remind me of like. Um, so they remind me of you know old punk bands that like I would go see we, back in the day, like when I was a teenager. School, yeah. yeah, like you know garage punk, or I was saying basement punk because we were in the basement listening to yeah, it was bands. Like, it was like no, it reminds me of bands we used to go see in high school at. Um, if you're in the Newark, Delaware area, at like um, Chapel Street, they used to have punk bands play there sometime. It was a little tiny, tiny yeah. theater. And I think it was um, I think it was the Unitarian Church on the other side of Newark that had bands too. But oh, yeah, yeah. So, very, very fun, but very fast rhythmically. Um, just definitely hardcore. Um, one of the songs is um, called Smoke and Crack with my friend Jeff. It just cracks me up. But it has the singer uh, Montgomery Morris. And screaming through the songs, and he also plays guitar with Dan Kenny on guitar, and Lara beats out on the drums. Um, so they were definitely just had that great punk sound, if you like that heavy heaviness to it. Um, but then when they became Bat Fangs, not so much more heavy, and that's the screaming that the singer did for Flesh yeah. Wounds, but um, more definitely poppier it's definitely catchier it is way catchier yeah um and sound and i couldn't fl find a terribly terrible lot of information uh, about lara specifically but i did find that she's did grow up in baltimore okay so they, yeah. yeah so they did grow up she did grow up in baltimore and um she you know was in the Baltimore scene, but of course she's younger than we are, so she she was definitely in a different scene from us, and she was influenced by a lot of Baltimore bands um, when she was a teen. <coughs> so anyway, so they merged together, Betsy and Lara, and I'm glad they did because they were amazing. They're amazing, recorded and live, which I got to say we did get to go see. 
um, last Friday, November 19th. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that was... Yeah, not yes, yeah, not, not last, yesterday. Because yeah, yeah. we're recording this on the 27th. Yeah, so it was, so, yeah, it was, the, week. Yeah, it was the week before. Um, we got to see them down at the auto bar. It was kind of like a whim thing that we saw. We were like, hey, yeah. I, I was going to order the record. Yeah, because it was like after we, we'd listen in to the samples online, yeah. Bobby said, oh, I should probably order these. And yeah, she didn't get around to it. And then I saw that they were going to be an auto bar. And I told her, I said, you want to go? And she was like, yes, you want to go? I'm like, yeah, sure. And Bobby's like, I'm just going to buy the records in the van because they'll have them, right? Yeah. So, and, and the tickets were, it was $10 a ticket. Like, that's my favorite kind of show ever. Cheap. Well, cheap. And it's just the like. The fact that it was over by, before 9 o'clock. Oh, my. Well, that too. It was an early show. <laughs> it was an early show. It started, the doors opened at 6. Yeah. And the first, the local band went on at 7. 7, yeah. I swear they played for 24 minutes. Yep. And then, then, uh. Um, Bat, Bat Fangs, Fangs came on pretty soon after. Pretty soon after, and yeah, and they were done by eight thirty, and I was like, "This is the best night ever." And I, okay, I do owe that to the fact that we are in our forties now. Yeah. We're not in our twenties, where before would have been like, "This is ridiculous. What do we do now after this show?" Well, what do we do after the show? We stop at Wawa, right? We do and get something to eat. This this, this episode <laughs> of the podcast is very. Um, very local, very a certain territory, shall yes, we say? Yes, yes, yeah. Because we've mentioned, you know, Auto Bar, yeah. and you know, Newark, Delaware, and Wawa, and oh my gosh, yes. So you guys know where, but the area that when we're we saw when, with. When, we, when we saw uh, Bat Fangs, they had like two songs left. Yeah. And the one song they covered, Motley Crue's Too Fast for Love. Yeah, which was awesome. And they you were like, I can't believe. Yeah, it. Yeah, they started getting... playing it, and I was like, Hmm, are they just? You're like, no way. Right. They're not going to play this. And they started playing it. I was like, oh, what? And um, and after I finished, they were like, yeah, we just learned it in the van earlier today. Yeah, and I was like, oh, my gosh, that's so cool. So that was really fun. That they started. <laughs> so when we saw them, um, it wasn't just Betsy and Laura. I wish I would have looked oh, yeah, up the to guy, this a little the, bit. The guy's yeah. name, the bass the, player. But they, they brought in a bass player, obviously, because Betsy can't play both <laughs> both at the same time. But I have a feeling like she could probably prove me wrong. Uh. So... Betsy, if you want, you know, yeah. give us a call and uh, you can. Yeah, if if, <laughs> if I remember, I'm gonna post um, video of them doing uh, "Too Fast for Love" on her Instagram. Yeah. If I remember. Yeah, that was great. So, but they did bring in uh, the third, a third Person. performer. Yeah, and um, th- they were great. I mean, we were in the. So, if you're f- not familiar with the Auto Bar, the Auto Bar is a really small like bar. Yeah. Um, the, in Baltimore, has a downstairs and an upstairs. Yeah, the, the, um, and the downstairs has a, thing, you know, it's a it's a it's a club show, so yeah, you know, so it it's got a, a raise, it's got a yeah. race stage, and you know, I saw, um, I mean, Bobby's seen a zillion shows yeah, there, seen them, yeah. and a couple years ago, I saw um, comedians Vox Theater of Hate and Jay Aston of Gene Love Jezebel there. Yeah, yeah, I've seen. Oh my gosh, and that, that was who that was a great show. I've seen uh, Eddie Spaghetti of Super Suckers, um, J D McPherson. Um, I don't even know. I just so many bands I've seen there, and yeah. um, it's just a great time. Just a great time. It's a great bar. If you don't know it, check and it then, out. They always so have there's great an upstairs. Stuff. Yes. So the upstairs, you go up this really narrow stairway. Very that, narrow. Very narrow and very steep. That <laughs> if someone's coming up and you're going down, you're waiting until they get up. Yes, because there's no room. No, or it's going to be a very awkward passing. But um, so yeah, if you, so we got up to the upstairs. There's a small bar. There's no real. There's a stage you know? area it's yeah. on the floor. There is no stage. Yeah, and a uh, pool tables. Pool tables, you know. And you're just so you're kind of just standing around all of that. Um, there's some tables like where you could you know eat some something or whatever and sit at. But maybe there was maybe forty maybe. people maybe, maybe pushing it um, that were there watching, which was really cool. You know, we were. Of course, and, you know we had to have our vaccinations, and you had to wear your mask. You had to wear your mask. Which is when not, you were, not a, it's a non-issue. Yeah, it's a non-issue for us. I don't care. You know, I'm just happy to be able to see music live yeah. again. So I really don't care. Um, so yeah, so we just went there and we saw them. It was so fantastic, and it looks like they sold a decent amount of merch, which is cool. Yes, it was great, and I got to get Betsy and Laura both signed um, their actual um, second album. Yeah. Queen of my world because mm-hmm. there was a little bit more of um because it, it's white a, space. Well, that and the sleeve actually had a um, yeah it was a, could, it had a tab on it. You could 
open it and take yeah. it out and the other one was yeah the original rat. didn't and the original is black black so with... i think but didn't it, what didn't one of them have a silver marker anyway i'm getting off top topic. yes yeah they actually did have it was just markers. easier to sign the new one it was the way it was packaged yeah but so i got both of them for 40 bucks and i was a happy camper um it just so happened that my phone died and they only took Venmo or cash and I couldn't get either because my phone was dead. Yeah. And so I have a very loving boyfriend who's like, I'll get it. Yeah. So it wasn't coincidental. Yeah. But, uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, but, um, but no, they're, they're a great band. I, I, I know a lot of times we talk about the records on here. Mm-hmm. We say how much we like the record. We usually don't end up promoting the mm-hmm. band. Mm-hmm. But... Sometimes we're going to make an exception. Yeah. And you should check out Bat Fangs. Definitely should. They're definitely... It's it's nice that they we're actually talking about a newer band on mm-hmm. here. Yeah. <laughs> so some band where like almost everyone's dead. Yeah. I think it's great. And I, I, I really like them. I get excited when I find newer bands that I actually like. That's not on the radio. Yeah. Like, I don't even listen to the radio, so I wouldn't know really what's on there. But the stuff that I like that I'm like, oh yeah. my gosh, this band is great. Because it's harder time for me to find newer bands that i really like and this is definitely one that i love um betsy's first band like i said x hex really good really good check them out if you like the more um uh punkier sound hardcore sound check out lara's other band flesh wounds um there's not a tons for for their band but there is some songs out there um and one other song that i found was joy division killed my boner which i thought was a hilarious title to a song so um and another thing i want to throw out there um like usually we do a spotify playlist mm-hmm. that goes along with this podcast you know so it has the music on it that we discuss i mean there'll be bat fangs on there assuming they're on spotify which i assume they are yeah and all that but you know if you listen to it bat fangs online you stream it and you dig it Buy something from the band. Support the band. The bands get hardly anything from streaming. Get, and yeah, especially a, a band at that level. They're not getting yeah. a dick. Yeah, absolutely. So the only way these bands can keep making music is if they're supported directly. Mm-hmm. So if, if you listen to on the Spotify playlist, you dig it, check out their website, buy a record. It's on cassette. Yes, it is. <laughs> get, buy a cassette. Yeah. You know, buy a shirt. Yeah, Just, absolutely. Just support them. And I... I I, I, that's one thing that I can say, like, I, with the younger generation, which, uh, you know, you've heard me talk about my girls, they're in their, you know, my oldest two are in their tw- early 20s. And they're always like, why would I buy that if I can just stream it? And I'm like, because you're not supporting the artist. Yeah, because if and, they don't have any money, they're going to stop. Yeah, they're going to stop making music. And There's so many bands that have just yeah. stopped because they're like, there's no money in it. And this is a great band. I don't want them to stop. I want them to the, keep going. There this was this great. British band from, I guess they were maybe 10 years ago, called uh, A Silent Film. Mm-hmm. They were a fantastic band. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were on the poppier side, but they were really good. And I have seen them two or three times. But yeah. each time they toured, they had one less member. Yes. Because they were a four-piece, and they were oh, a three-piece. And the last tough. time they came through, they were a duo. Yeah. It was just the singer and the drummer of some, you know, touring guys. And then they broke up. Yeah. And the singer did, like, a, a final tour doing right. the, the um, silent film songs. Well, and I think that's, like, another thing that brings me to the point, like, so when we were growing up, you didn't have Spotify or yeah. things like that. You had to buy the merchandise yeah. to get it, to be able to, and that supported them directly. And I think that was why a lot of great bands are still around today that we hear because they had that, those sales and stuff. And then now it's like they just get pennies on the dollar for and, and, any time a song is streaming. It's like. And it seems like, I, I, it's, not, it's not like an old fart, but. It seems like younger people don't have the um, dedication to stuff that they like. Yeah. And it seems the like seems more fleeting. Yeah. Well, I definitely think that I always say like our generation, I feel like is a very nostalgic generation yeah. anyway. Like we love tangible things. Yeah. We like to see them. We like to touch them. Not us. Uh, yeah. We, yeah. How many uh, CD uh, uh, shelving units do we need to hold all of our CDs? Yeah, so people are like, <laughs> CDs. <laughs> CDs. Like I was in a um a shop out yesterday digging for stuff for the um eBay store and I found some stuff and I was talking to the owner and he was like he was like man because this guy has like so many CDs for sale mm-hmm. and he's a good dude. I'm not gonna name the name of the place, but he's a good dude and um 
he was like, I have so many CDs. He, he told me he just bought like a collection of 9,000. 9,000. Oh, I would love to buy a He said it was, some, he said it was <laughs> like some rich kid. He said most of them weren't even opened. Oh he gosh. just collected them and then didn't listen to most of them. He said like, but he said most of the collection was jazz, so. Yeah. Um, but he said that he had he had so many CDs in his shop because most shops in the area won't buy them anymore. Right. He's, like, he's like, I love them. He's like, I'm buying it. It's so hard now to get good used vinyl titles. Yeah. And then, you know, the pressing plants for new vinyl are backed up right. because of the, the Adele record. <laughs> I and, think and, it's a little more than just the Adele most, record. No, but... Mostly the Adele record <laughs> put everything back. That and all the really super shitty stuff on this um, Black Friday record store day. Yes. Ugh, uh, I mean... I feel bad for the stores that bought a bunch of those titles because it's, it's going to be rough getting rid of them. Yeah, at the end, end of yesterday, they were all posting on like social media. Going, we still have plenty of titles left, and you're looking, you're like, yeah, those titles suck, though. Mm-hmm. I don't like to say anything sucks, but because everybody's fun, fun is, is different, different. But these titles <laughs> suck. Um, I feel bad because how much money these dudes are going to lose on a lot of these titles. And the only thing that was supposed to come out from this record store day that I wanted was mm-hmm. the reissue of Al Cooper's Brutal Planet. Yeah. But that was pushed back the next year. So I was like, Phew. Ooh. Wipe the brow. Yeah. But yes, yeah, support support your local artists. Well, they're not even technically our local artists, but yeah. just support artists in general. Anyone that you know, yeah, I kinda of know a lot of people. I mean, back in back in back in back in days. Oh no, here we go. Um you know, people were like, Why should I support the artists? They're rich and blah blah blah. You know, back then when almost any band could sell half a million copies of an mm-hmm. album. Right. You know, and there was money and everything. Yeah, it was a lot easier. Mm-hmm. But now there's, there's no money in it. There's yes. no money in making music. That's why some bands, older bands, have given up making records. I agree. They're like, what's the point? Oh, no. But then, you know, newer bands, you know, they, they've they grown up with um, technology, so they know mm-hmm. they can get a laptop, pro, pro Tools, and a couple good chords and mics and boom, they make an album like in their bedroom. That's true. And hey, I'm not knocking that because there are some no. great artists out there that have done that, that yeah. I've, uh, the younger generation, because that I've met yeah, the, through my children yeah. that have done that, which are amazing. And the album sounds great. And you find out they recorded right. it in their bedroom on a laptop. Right. And you're like, that's crazy. It, but, I mean, there's older artists like Todd Rundgren. He, is record, he records his stuff a lot on, yeah. on a laptop. And one of the guys from the Hooters did his. Wait, who was the one that did that? Um, they record it in their bathroom, literally. He's sitting on a. Oh. Who was that? We just watched that, but I, can't I mean, like anybody can do it now. I mean, yeah. I, that's awesome. Which uh, you know, but it's definitely the the newer bands nowadays do need the support. Yeah. So I I do say you know don't just yeah. stream them, purchase so, their stuff, you know, go, go to their website, go to their website, go to their Bandcamp. Especially yes. when there's a Bandcamp Fridays where Bandcamp doesn't take a percentage and yeah. all this money goes to the artist. Yes. And like I said, if you don't know Autobar, check out Autobar. They have yeah. great stuff. They have great bands. They also do like dance nights. They have metal Mondays. Yeah. Like, and the metal Mondays are free. <laughs> they are free and it's super cool. And the bartenders there are great and super nice. So just check out, check them out. Uh, that's that's all I'm going to. Okay. I'm done um, preaching. All right. Yeah. Amen. But thank you. So anyway, so I hope you listen to Bat Fangs and, and you like them. And um, let me know. Let us know what you think and you know, on our Instagram page. So Bobby did a new artist. Yes, I did. We're going to take a little break. Yup. And we're going to come back with a not so new mm-hmm. artist. Everybody go to the potty and go. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. <laughs> Yes, we are, and we hope you enjoyed Bobby's stalking of bat fangs. <laughs> My rambling wonders. <laughs> and if you did enjoy it, make sure you like, follow, subscribe, share. Is there anything else I'm missing? Like, follow, share, subscribe. Purchase. Yeah. <laughs> All um, of those follow us, just fo- follow us on Instagram <laughs> and Facebook. And on the Insta. Twi- on the Twitters, if I ever post the on Twitters. there. Is that um, what they say? The Twitters? The, I don't know. And, um, you know, go to bittersweetandtwistedrecords.com. You'll find a link to our tea Public store where we have the T-shirts and the tote bags and the onesies <laughs> and mugs. And you could get underwear, I said. I even everything. 
Anything you want, it is there. And it has the links where you can listen to the podcast. It has you know, a direct link. It has um, Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, YouTube. Um, the link to our... <coughs> excuse me. To our Spotify playlist that go with each yes. episode. And they're, and they're great playlist, FYI. Just... They're, 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 and then we have a few playlists that aren't attached to any podcast, yes. like our... Punk um, rock. The punk rock one, favorites. Um, hair metal. Uh, 100 hair metal yeah. favorites. Um, there's some good stuff on there. Um, but here is what I teased in the first part. If you go to bittersweetandtwistedrecords.com mm-hmm. and follow our eBay store link where we have CDs and records and cassettes and posters and a couple books right now. Yes. A, a few DVDs and Blu-rays and VHS mm-hmm. and a handful of t-shirts left. We sold quite a few t-shirts over the summer mm-hmm. and we haven't restocked any. I mean, it's not like it's not our t-shirts. It's like artists like... um. Who do we sell? We sold Misfits and mm-hmm. Queen and a whole bunch of bands. Yeah. Um, so if you go to the eBay store, I have a discount code Ooh. for 15% off. Wow. And that code is podcast15off, podcast one five O F F, And that is 15% off, and that is nice. good until the end of 2021. Wow, there you go. It got like a month, two months. Month and... Well, month. Month, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, pretty much. To so use that. Yeah, so, so yeah, that's awesome. you can get 15% off any purchase on from our eBay store until December tw- mm-hmm. uh, December 31st at 11.30 p.m. Pacific. Yeah. Because that's the time the eBay would let me <laughs> use this <laughs> to cut it off. Oh, I have something I should plug. Oh, no. What? I do. Um, since this is going to be airing December 1st... Yeah. We are actually doing our first vendor oh, event yes. on December 9th at Alecraft Brewery. That's A L E, Alecraft Brewery um, in Bel Air. Um, they're going to be doing Bel Air where? Bel Air, Maryland. Okay. Um, so they're going to, so it's a, it's a great little small brewery if you'd like brews, which great, I do. Great little small. Great. Oh, God. Yeah. I'm sorry. Sorry. Horrible grammar. I'm telling people say, Say, um, stupid dummy, yeah, or, or dumb idiot. It's so, like... anyway, so sorry, but anyway, if uh, and so it's a small brewery, <sighs> they have great brews, um, and also they're going to be having this event with um, several different vendors there, different type of vendors, and we are going to be the only vendor of our kind there, uh, selling merch um and music and things that are basically on our ebay store but we'll be doing it live so and if you're in the area yeah and you've seen something in the ebay store um you can probably get it there we yeah. won't be bringing everything obviously but yeah if you see something in the ebay store and you don't want to pay shipping on it yeah contact us and we'll bring it yeah absolutely but yeah so we will be in Bel Air on december 9th um that event begins at 5 p.m mm-hmm. So if you get off work, stop on in, get a beer, and shop the local vendors and things. And so I'm really excited about that. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It'll be interesting. It'll be our first. <laughs> so hopefully it goes well. And you know, like we'll have other, we'll have books um, to sell, um, some CDs, some records, mm-hmm. and different things like that. Yeah, something like that. So that was my plug. I had to All throw right. in there. Okay, so. All the plugs out of the way. Yes. It's now time for... Ooh. That's a drum oh, roll. Drum roll, wow. Um, it's time for Vince's record, mm-hmm. which when I get into it, you will see how important and special this is. You will. To the podcast as a whole. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. So, my record, my record... Is the Choir Boys a bit of what you fancy from 1990? Ooh. And if you don't know the Choir Boys, they're um British. They're a British rock band. They're, they're very British. Mm-hmm. Um, they're very much in the mold of the Faces, yes. Frankie Miller, and Good Rod Stewart. Yes. Um, there, I've read somewhere. I wish I, I wish I could find the source again, but they describe their music as gypsy soul. Okay, I can see that. So, huge fan of this band. Yes, been a fan of this band for like. Since 1990, when this record came out, MTV played them on Headbangers Ball, which 
always bothered me. <laughs> and they play them on Hair Nation on yeah, series. Is... It's like they're they're not a hair band. Yeah, I they... mean they they do have great hair. Well, but, most of yeah, them. Yeah. <laughs> But they're they're not a hair band. Listen no. to music. They're they're seventies rock band. Yeah. Like I said, like the faces of Frankie Miller. They're, they're not a hair band. They're not nothing to do with like a Poison or Motley no. Crue or any of that. They have great style too. Yeah. Very very similar style to v- Rod Stewart. Very seventies. Uh, very seventies. Seventies esque. Yeah. yeah I, I forgot if I had the money, I'd dress like those guys all the time. Oh, I'd love that. But you know, my job, I don't think it'd go over very well. The big, why do you have that big bandana thing on your head? <laughs> What's up with all the scarves? Yeah, why do you why do you have three scarves on? <laughs> um, so <laughs> the Choir Boys started when um, singer Jonathan Gray, who's best known as um, Spike, okay, and his flatmate guitarist Guy Bailey started playing Chuck Berry songs together after a year of living together. When they first met, because I, I think one of them had known the other one's sister. Okay. And had needed a, and so when Spike moved to London, he, you know, they needed a flatmate. Mm-hmm. So those guys were living together. And then a friend of theirs brought over a guitar, mm-hmm. and they started playing Chuck Berry covers. And they're like, "What? You're, you do music? I do music." Um, Guy Bailey's name sounds like somebody who'd play Chuck Chuck Berry songs, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and also, you're using the very British terms flatmate. We might have some very American yeah. listeners who don't know what a flatmate is. It's a roommate. Yeah, there you go. Where's a part? <laughs> Um, and so they decide to call their band the Choir Boys, but C H O I R B O Y A. Yes. After the 1977 film with the same name directed by Robert Aldrich. Okay. Aldrich. And um, so they rounded out the band with um, bassist Nigel. I'm, I don't know if it's Mog. Sounds right. But, you know, I'm, I'm good at butchering spellings. But Nigel's uncle Phil played in the band UFO. Okay. Um, pianist Chris Johnstone and drummer Paul Hornby, mm-hmm. I'm pointing at you, yes. had played with Pete Burns in Nightmares and Wax before Pete started Dead or Alive. Wow. And if you've listened to this podcast, yes. you know there's two things for sure. Mm-hmm. We love Rod Stewart. Mm-hmm. Particularly, true. particularly good Rod Stewart. Yes. And we love Dead or Alive. We do. Until last weekend <laughs> when I showed Bobby pictures of... Um, Pete Burns in the few years I before was so he passed. Because she was always like, he was such a pretty man. He was gorgeous. And so we were sitting in a brewery and I was like, really? Yeah. And, I showed, and she was like, ah! I know. I'm like, why did you do that? In my head, I have this vision of him from like 1985. Yes, of what he looked like. And I just like to assume, he, and I know some reality, it, 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 that's it, how he looked. But if you read his story, it's really sad because he had like one, he had like, he got like one procedure done because he had a lot of plastic surgery. Oh, oh He yeah. had one procedure done and they messed that up. Mm-hmm. So he had to have a corrective one and mm-hmm. that didn't go well. Mm-hmm. So, and then it just started and went out of control and, and then you know issue of painkillers mm-hmm. and all this and it, one time he tried defending he defended his um plastic surgery by saying he put his nose on his ass if he felt like it yeah um so yeah so vince just vince has this um theory that uh, i think he said a great ability to roll people well i was gonna say that too but no <laughs> You have this great ability to, um, if you are not happy with something, you're just going to make sure, like, you need to be upset with this, too. Let me yeah. tell you, he did not look like that. Let me show you. And I was like, no. Well, like like I said at, at, at the Bat Fang show, yeah. there was this one dude who was, like, way into it. Yes. And I turned to Bobby and I said, just takes one person having a good time to keep me from having one. That's <laughs> true. That's true. That's um, true. But I was, very, I was very saddened. But anyway, he's still dead or alive. Uh, oh, 1980s. Yeah. yeah, he was beautiful. So so the, so these guys formed Choir Boys mm-hmm. with a C. So when they were going to the rehearsal space, they'd always pass this construction site. And they, you know, they had the eyeliner on. They dressed mm-hmm. like rock stars. And so the um, guys working at the construction site used to call them the Queer Boys. Oh, gosh. So they were like... Okay, so Choir Boys became the Queer Boys. Oh, funny. And um, in 1986, they were supporting um, the band Cherry Bombs, which featured former, former Hanoi rock guitarists Nasty Suicide and Andy McCoy. Okay. Uh, Dave Traguna from Sham 69 and the Lords of the New Church. Nice. And Terry Chimes of The Clash and Black Sabbath. Yeah. 
Um, the name the Queer Boys led to some promoters canceling some shows. On yeah, the tour. I was going to say that there was never anything that was recorded under that. Was no, there? Yeah. I, don't, I don't think so. Yeah, so I could see see why. But Cherry Bombs are a great band. They had a girl singer whose name I can't remember off the top of my head, uh-huh. but I've got the Cherry Bombs record. I don't know if it was. I don't know, I can't remember if it was a full length album or some singles, but I know I have a couple of their releases. Okay. Because I love Hanoi Rocks. Yes, I know. Um, in nineteen eighty seven. The Queer Boys were offered a slot on the prestigious Reading Festival under the condition that they changed their name. Oh, okay. So the Queer Boys became the Choir Boys. Q-U-I-R-E-B-O-Y-S. Right. Yes. So it wasn't the same Choir Boys as they had before. They're now Choir Boys because it's close to Queer Boys. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. I see why they did that. So they released um, two singles, Mayfair and There She Goes Again. And around this time, they were joined by rhythm guitarist Ginger when they had played the Hammersmith Odeon supporting Guns N' Roses on their first UK tour. Oh, okay. And in 1989, Choir Boys signed of EMI Records and released 7 O'Clock as their debut major label single. Okay. Which cracked the UK Top 40 singles chart. Whoa. Yeah. And Ginger was let go. Oh, poor Ginger. But he went on to form the Wild Hearts. Okay. And played with a bunch of people and still is, still makes music, does, still does Ginger Wild Heart albums and okay. albums as the Wild Hearts. One of the record stores that we, well, I follow on Instagram, mm-hmm. they were posting records they were going to have out for Black Friday. Not not new garbage, but like cool used ones. Yeah. And they had the, one of them had the um, Wild Hearts riff, riff, riff after riff. Okay. Which is also known as riff after motherfucking riff. Ooh. And I was like, ah. Oh, but anyway. <laughs> Put it on your list of eight, records you'd love to have. Eight million records that yeah. I can't afford. Right. Okay. Um, which for some people, like, just buy it. Like, a little cheap side. Yeah. Um, but uh, Ginger's replacement was um, Guy Griffin. And they've had a couple drummer changes since they formed. And now Ian Wallace joined the band to play on the debut album. Okay. Ian had previously played with Bob Dylan and Steve Marriott. Okay. And for the tour, uh, Rudy Richmond, I think was his name, did the tour. Okay. And and on the album, Rod Stork keyboardist Kevin Savigar uh, did the string arrangements. Oh, interesting. And this album was called A Bit of What You Fancy. Mm-hmm. When the UK release was January 29th of 1990. It was produced by George Tutko. Who has since passed? I think he died in 2015. Okay. Who had also worked with Rod Stewart and Duran Duran's Andy Taylor, and it was co-produced with Jim Cregan, who was Rod Stewart's guitarist for on and off for a number right. of years for a solo band. He also played with uh, Steve Harley and Cockney Rebel. Can I just say like how we always are um, name dropping like crazy? Well, that too. I, that made me think for a second, but um, know how. I didn't have anybody that died in my band. In the bands that oh, I yeah. did, usually somebody always is, dies and yeah. the music we talk about and then you just... So, <laughs> oh, yeah. I think um, one of the um, early drummers for um, Choir Boys is dead. Okay. So, yeah. So, got two dead guys. So, that's what happens, see, when you do an older yeah. record. And a bit of what you fancy went the number two on the UK album chart. Okay. So, it was... You'll say it was hugely successful at right. number two. And on the supporting tour, they did shows with the Rolling Stones, White Snake, Aerosmith, Poison, and Thunder. Now, they <coughs> did obviously did really well in the UK. Yeah. How was that over here in the US? Well, in the US, Capitol Records released the bit of what you fancy in the US and Canada, but the band's name was changed for North oh. America. It was they became the London Choir Boys. Because oh. there was another band called Choir Boys. With a C. With a C. Right. I, which I, I thought was ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. But to avoid confusion, they did it. Okay. And it was just really, I hate the name. Of the it's, it's like the band Suede. Mm-hmm. The British band Suede, who are awesome. But when they came over to the U.S. and started playing in, the, I guess, the early 90s, there was apparently there's an old lady, not old lady, but a lady <laughs> blues singer from okay. the 60s or 70s named Suede. Oh, okay. And they couldn't figure out why her albums were starting to sell all of a sudden. Oh, because... Because people were, <laughs> thought they were buying Suede records. Oh, funny. And so they became the London Suede. Okay. So here, so the London Choir Boys, was that when it was released? So on all their albums over here, it was yeah. all changed to the London yeah. Choir Boys? It's, 
Oh, I see it. I see it on the record. Yeah. Okay. But well, it's like the mission became the mission UK because right. there was right. a band called Mission, mission. over here mm-hmm. who are like a dance act or yes. something. Um, but now the choir boys are back to just being choir boys in the U.S. now because okay. it's been so many years. Um, but when the U.S. and the Kimmer did their first tour supporting mm-hmm. the album, they did shows. They played on bills with L.A. Guns, nice. Soundgarden, The Cramps, and Iggy Pop. Mm. So it's a little that bit of a variety. But what I think, a, but I think the um, I think the um, Cramps and Iggy Pop show. I think that was um, Ian Asbury the Cod who put this festival together called Gathering of the Tribes. Okay. I think that's the bill that Iggy. Because it would have been the cult, oh. Iggy, Cramps, I think Ice T or Bot, Ice T, I don't know if Ice T or Ice Cube was on it, and there was someone else. I think it's Ice T. Because I know um, Perry Farrell just ripped off the idea for Lollapalooza. Because well, yes. no one, because apparently Gathered the Tribes was a failure. Uh-huh. So it didn't go, it just did like one or two shows. I... And so Lollapalooza, I think it was like the next year. Magically, Perry had this idea to take bands from different genres and put together. I believe that that. Re- that um, that show when the Cramps did that, there is a recording of um, the Cramps performing at that concert, yeah. and um, it was a great performance. But I, well, so I do believe I've seen. Some well, there's of those. so many Cramps bootleg records out there. Live yeah. Ones. Well, this one no was an actual video video, oh. video recording of them okay. doing it. So yeah, so it's kind of funny. I'm pretty sure it's that one that they're in. But that would have been so much fun, though. Oh, my goodness. I know. Uh, so many bands that we oh, love on the same bill. Yes. And there was four singles released from A Bit of What You Fancy. There was the aforementioned 7 O'Clock, mm-hmm. which went to number 41 in Canada and number 36 in the UK. Okay. Hey You, which was number 82 in Canada, number 14 in the UK. There She Goes Again, which went number 37 in the UK. Mm-hmm. And I Don't Love You Anymore, which was number 71 in Canada, number 24 in the UK, and number 76 in the US. So it's their lone US right. minor hit. I mean, it is in the top 100, but, you know, it looks like they did okay in Canada for the yeah. first album. Yeah, and it sounds like they did, I mean, for the most part, did great in the UK. Mm-hmm. And now they played with a lot of really big names yeah. over in the UK as well as here in the yeah. US. But they never got the popularity, really, no. as... It just the, didn't, like the Stones or anybody. It just you know? for something for some around the same time they came out in the U.S. The Black Crows came out. Okay. And so some people had like they tried to compare the two bands. I could see that, but I'm like, eh, yeah, it's it's not quite right. It's not quite you know. But so they're like, well, a lot, I'm gonna read. The Choir Boys are like a knockoff of the Black Crows. I'm like, first of all, Choir Boys came first. Yeah, yeah, I could see, I could see that. But I could yeah, see. but I mean, they're both like. You know, very organic rock yes. and roll, but Choir Boys are very, like I said before, very British. Right. Black Crows are very American. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're. I mean, both bands are drawing from the same influence of like '60s right. soul and early yes. '70s rock. But I mean, if you want to uh, bands that can be differentiated by the country they're from, mm-hmm. you can hear it in the sound. Yeah. Like you hear Choir Boys, you're like, that's a British band. Yeah. You hear Black Crows, you're like, that's an American band. Yeah, true. There's no doubt. Absolutely. So I always thought it was really unfair that those two bands... And I could see why they wouldn't do, because, I mean, America was going crazy for the Black Crows yeah. during this time period. I mean, I was going crazy for the yeah. Black Crows during this time period, so I could see that. And it's funny, because, like, the first Black Crows album, they went out on a tour with Junkyard. Right. And as you know, I love Junkyard. I know you do, yeah. But um, I, think, I think Junkyard were the headliner on that tour. Oh, I think Brian Baker of um, Junkyard said it was, he, he preferred to call it a co-headline tour. Yeah. But Black Crows blew up after that. And oh, yeah, they did. Junkyard is still kicking. Yeah, they are. I just got that new 7-inch of theirs, Lifer. That's you true. You can check it out. It's on Acetate Records. Mm-hmm. It's I got the um, Smoke Color Vinyl. It's a great song. Um, anyway, not to get too sidetracked. So they did the tour of all those mm-hmm. big bands. They went to Japan, played festivals in Japan. Were they big in Japan? Ah, yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, corny jokes. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so they released a live album at the end of the tour called Live, recorded around the world. Oh, okay. So not terribly original album title. Right, not really, no. But that's okay. So in 93, this is big. This is so big. So big. Big, big. And you're going to understand so much about this podcast <laughs> okay. in the next sentence. 
1993, the Choir Boys released their follow-up album, which was entitled Bittersweet and Twisted. <gasps> what? Dun, dun, dun. So, yeah, that's where I got the name I'm for so, the podcast. I'm so shocked. <laughs> uh, just kidding. I know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's where the name came from because I'm a big Choir Boys fan. We were going to call it 17 Seconds originally. Yeah. But there's, like, a podcast in France called that. I think there's, like, a jewelry store in Italy called that. Yeah. There was a fanzine in the U.S. about, like, air traffic control patterns called 17 Seconds. Yeah. And, then, and that was really our idea was that was uh, yeah. for the band. Yeah, The Cure. The Cure. But there was just too many people, that too many copyright copy. issues, that yeah, those infringements. So and so we came up with um, all kinds of names we were using. I wish I had the list, the text oh. exchanges we had. <laughs> um, you had some, which are actually already used, too. Yeah. Um, I think you were something like polyvinyl records yeah, or something, which is, which is used. Actual, yeah, which is actual used. Shop. Yep. I had some really... Um, unrepeatable names yeah which were great though, they were but. great but i mean they're just i'm not gonna repeat them because they're no. just so incorrect anyway so i was listening to choir boys and i was like bittersweet and twisted their second yeah. record which i'd love to have on vinyl but so now if you followed us all along through this episode yeah. eight you've learned a little bit insider secret i know you're now you feel <laughs> now you feel like um uh family well no um on um, Breaking Bad, you feel like um, Walter's brother-in-law when he found out that Walt was um, Heisenberg. It's that level. Oh, that level. It's that level of, whoa. I never watched that show, so I'm yeah, sorry. That was a good show. I, I, I didn't get into I, it. I know it was. I didn't get into it. It was almost over, so I had to I binge. Don't... So I had to binge the whole thing before okay. the finale got ruined. Because wasn't it on, like, uh, AMC. cable? It was on AMC. Oh, it was AMC. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think they're all on Netflix now, probably. Yeah. But You know, me living in the boonies, yeah. I didn't have that stuff. So, Bittersweet and Twisted, the record, topped out at number 31 in the UK. Okay. So it didn't do anywhere right. as well as the previous record. Yeah. And two of the three singles from the album hovered around the lower end of the top 40. Mm-hmm. And after a summer tour of Guns N' Roses, the band called it a day. Oh. So they did a few one-off shows in the mid-90s and then officially reformed in 2000. And released the album, This Is Rock and Roll. Mm-hmm. And the Choir Boys remain active to this day. Mm-hmm. With the core lineup being vocalist Spike, mm-hmm. guitarists Guy Griffin and Paul Guerin, and keyboardist Keith Weir with Pip Mailing on drums and Nick Mailing on bass. I am all for you dressing like Spike. Okay. Whenever we... Um, when you don't have to work your day job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I... I, I, I Guy Griffin has a great taste in hats. Is that oh, that's the one with the top hat that I like. I think that's him, but he has a hat he wears now. It's really awesome. I'll have to show it to you when done this. Okay. I show it to you right now, but my phone's over there. I'm like getting up. Um, so, but in 2010, yeah, um, Garen Griffin and Weir joined up with Def Leppard singer Joe Elliott okay. to form a new band called Down and Outs. Okay. And originally, the band was a Mott the Hoople tribute. And they released two Mott covers of singles, England Rocks and Overnight Angels, hmm. which hit number one on the U- U.S. rock radio chart. Oh, wow. And then they released two albums, mm-hmm. The Further Adventures of the Down and Outs and This Is How We Roll. And This Is How We Roll received the Best British Rock Album Award by Planet Rock Radio in the U.K. Hmm. I always find it so interesting, like you, you know, you've listed all these big name artists that, who I, who I've mm. known, who I've heard about. Yeah. But, and you talk about the Black Crows. Now, I completely remember them because I was in the 90s. I was in eighth grade getting ready to go into high school. So uh-huh. I remember them. But I don't ever remember hearing about a band called the Choir Boys. Yeah, because they only, the London Choir Boys. The London know. Choir Boys. They're, they're, and they're one U.S. hit. Right. But you would think that if, like, they toured with the Stones yeah. or something, you would, th- I don't know. I just, in my head, I would think that you would hear more about you this band. Think. You would think. But you really... You know, I didn't. Um, I want to throw in one more fact Ooh. before I wrap up. Nerd the, alert. The bass player yeah. for um, the Down and Outs yeah. is the bass player from the 80s girl hair metal band Vixen. Oh, Vixen. So it's nice. quite, a, um, quite a lineup for a band. That is. Cool. So the wrap up here. 
a mm-hmm. uh, bit of what you fancy was reissued in 2009 mm-hmm. on CD with a bonus disc, which included eight demo tracks. Cool. Which I guess that was, a little, I guess it was supposed to have been for the 20th anniversary, even though it was a year off. Okay. <clears throat> and in this year, mm-hmm. 2021, Car Boys released a 30th anniversary re-recording of A Bit of What You Fancy with the record of the current lineup and then as two bonus live tracks. Hmm. It always amazes me that when I say like 30th year yeah. and then I'm like, 30th year. And then I think back how old I was yeah. and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so old. Yeah. Been, yeah, I was 14 when that album came out then. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Somewhere around that. Somewhere. So, that is our two albums. Yes. Bat Fangs and Choir Boys. Yes. Um, both bands you should really check out. You should. And um, like I said, buy the merch from Choir Boys. Have a whole bunch of albums you can buy from their website. Absolutely. I mean, most of them are on CD. They have a couple mm-hmm. on vinyl, but um, go out there, get them. Yeah, support them. Support the well, artist people. Yep. And as always, if you enjoyed the babbling you heard today, like, follow, subscribe, share, all that comment, good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, all that fun stuff. Make sure you go to bittersweetandtwistedrecords.com mm-hmm. so you can see all the links where you can listen to this. Yeah, and give us some ideas that if you have a band that you maybe we don't know about because it's in a different area because we're yeah. on the northern east coast. So if and there's like. You're Somebody like, that we've never heard of. You're like, you guys suck. You should check out this band. Yeah, please email us, or I guess you don't have a well, yeah, message you, us through Instagram. Yeah, bittersweetandtwisted.com, whatever. <coughs> There's plenty of ways to, um, yeah, let us know. Oh, bittersweet twisted records at gmail.com. There you go. I mean, let us know what you're into, or maybe you didn't like something, or you say you have, you're wrong, right? A then correction, we, and then I can write back and say, You're an idiot. I'm absolutely right all the time. <clears throat> no, he's not. Um, <laughs> And before we sign off here, remember, if you go to our eBay store, which is linked at bitterandsweettwistedrecords.com, you can get 15% off your purchase from now until the end of the year yeah. by using, it's all, all caps, PODCAST15 OFF. Yes. So get some um, Christmas gifts, and hopefully the U- USPS will um, deliver them in time. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, we need we want fans. We want you guys to listen and, and be a part of us and be part of our show. So... And if you're in the area, yeah. come out to Alecraft. Alecraft on in, December 9th at 5 p.m. In Bel Air, Maryland. Maryland. Come by, say hello, buy some stuff. And I think that is it. Yeah. So we'll catch you in middle two weeks. of the month. Yeah. yeah. And hopefully by then we will know what we're talking about. Because right now I have no, no idea, idea what we're going to do no, for the next episode. Not at all. Some of these, some of these episodes come up just a few days before we re- yeah. record them, because Bobby knew what record she was going to do last week. I did. And I, I originally we were going to do two different records, but then yes. we saw Bat Fangs. Bobby's, like, I'm doing Bat Fangs now. Yeah, because I, I want to get her, the word out. I'm one of the people. So I know. had to, like, cause I had a whole another record planned out and partially written, and I was like, damn it. Yeah. So, so I only decided on this record last night. Good job, babe. I know. Yes. So. Check out the artist that we spoke about, um, Betsy Lara. I'm a super fan now. Okay. <laughs> and check- Spike and Guy and yeah. Paul and Keith. I'm a super fan too. Yep, that's right. Um, <laughs> so um, thanks for listening. Um, share with your friends. Um, and thank you for spending an hour with us. Yep. Thanks, guys. Catch you later.